By the end of this session, you should have a better understanding of the different types of microphones and accessories that can be used for recording audio. The two main types of microphones are condensers and dynamic. Dynamic microphones are often used where loud bass noises are being recorded, such as gunshots and drums. However, these types of microphones have slower moving diaphragms and are not able to reproduce high frequency sounds as well as condenser microphones. One of the benefits of this type of microphone is they do not require external power. Condenser microphones though, being more accurate, are more fragile and more costly than dynamic microphones. This type of microphone cannot sustain long periods of recording loud noises, but in controlled situations are able to reproduce a better quality of sound. However, condenser microphones require external power so that the diaphragm can convert the acoustic sound into an electronic signal. Some condenser microphones are powered by batteries, while others use 48 volts of phantom power that comes across balanced cables from the recorder. It is important to ensure that the microphone being used does not have a dual power, where a battery has previously been used. If a battery has been installed and the phantom power is also switched on, it can damage both the microphone and the recorder, so ensure you read the instructions on how to use the microphone safely. Microphone polar patterns refers to the way the microphone picks up where the sound is coming from. Omnidirectional has a 360 degree pattern which captures the sound from all directions. Cardioid has a heart shaped pattern, primarily taking sound from in front of the microphone and to the sides, but nothing from the rear. Hypercardioid is similar to the cardioid pattern with a tighter range in front and some sound from the rear. Supercardioid follows a similar pattern to the hypercardioid, but with less sound picking up from the sides. Figure of eight or bidirectional pattern is effectively two cardioids facing in opposite directions to capture equally sound from the front and the rear. There are a range of different microphones that are used at different stages of the production. Stereo microphones are two microphones placed together but spaced apart. The two mics face towards one another at 90 degrees for narrow stereo. Alternatively, they can face away from one another for a wide stereo. Rifle mics are designed to record audio directly in front, with reduced sound being picked up from the sides and rear. This type of microphone draws the audio in closer. This is a mono microphone. Lavalier mics offer further flexibility which can be attached to a performer and hidden. The link to the recorder can be either via a long lead or through a wireless transmitter and receiver. The latter version allows the recorder to be detached from the performer. However, constant monitoring has to be carried out to listen for when the distance between performer and recorder are too great, disrupting the audio or that the batteries on either receiver or transmitter have failed, again disrupting the audio. This is also a mono microphone. Vocal mics can be used for recording voiceovers where the performer can be up close to the microphone. As the microphone uses the cardioid polar pattern, the audio is mostly picked up from the front and to the sides. Again, another mono microphone. All the microphones explored in this section have been condenser microphones. However, the handheld is a dynamic microphone, not requiring power for the diaphragm. This version demonstrated here has a cardioid polar pattern and is mono. There are issues with cameras with built-in mics as they have been cheaply made to keep costs down. But interference from surrounding electronics can get picked up very easily and ruin the sound. This is the same with mics built into digital SLRs and palm corders. For this reason, we recommend that recording audio should be done in a separate recorder. Another piece of equipment to think about is the clapper board, as this helps to synchronize sound and pictures in editing. Microphone accessories are used to help reduce sound distortion or interference that prevents clean audio being recorded. Shock mounts help reduce handling noise which can cause vibration 
when the hand is in direct contact with the microphone or boom. The windshield helps reduce the speed of air movement across the microphone, which is called wind noise. The wind jammer goes over the windshield and again helps to further reduce the wind noise. A boom pole allows the microphone to be moved in close to the position of the sound being recorded. Care has to be taken in handling the boom so that the hand movements are not picked up by the microphone. External cables come in two types, balanced and unbalanced. Due to unbalanced cables only having two conductors, interference and external sound can interrupt the audio being recorded. Balanced sound have a third conductor that shields the cable from external interference. Phantom power can be also transmitted along a balanced cable without causing interference. Stands help to reduce vibration from handling the microphone, but care has to be taken that other vibrations are not traveling across the floor and up the stand. An adjustment arm can be convenient for holding a vocal microphone when recording voiceovers. They are easily maneuvered, but again care needs to be taken to correctly position the arm before recording, as the springs can add vibration. The pop filter is used in front of the microphone to help prevent distortion created when B's and P's are vocalised, creating a popping sound when the air hits the microphone at speed. In this session, we've looked at the different types of microphones and accessories that can be used to record audio. As an exercise, use a range of microphones you have available to you and make a series of audio recordings. Then listen to the audio using headphones that surround your ears to hear what the quality of recordings are like. What did you notice about the audio recordings? Was there any external interference? Could you hear distortion caused through your hand movements? Can you hear any electronic sounds or wind against the microphone? Is there any sound that you did not think was there when you did the recordings? As a second exercise, deliberately move your hands across the surface of the camera or microphone while you're doing your recordings so that you can hear the distortion. Make a recording of moving closer to a computer and away from the computer. What differences can you hear?